Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, online session. My name is uh, Imran Omarji, and I'll be taking you through our SAGE online payslips module. The session will last approximately 15 to 20 minutes, with time to answer any questions you may have at the end. Uh, if you do have any questions throughout the session, peel, please uh, feel free to use a chat window, and uh, I will attempt to answer them at the end. So what's so special about online payslips? Why have we introduced this option? Well, if you are using the traditional option of printing payslips and posting them out to employees, it costs approximately 47 to 50 pence or more, depending on how you post them and what stationery you use. Now, this cost is reduced to about 12 pence for online payslips, so the margin on making savings can be quite considerable. In addition to this, the time taken to deal with employee queries can be quite cumbersome. But with online payslips, employees can access them anytime they want, and if they require a paper copy for whatever reason, then they can do so through the portal. A lot of companies have been emailing payslips recently, but the data protection authorities are looking at that to see whether that is a legitimate way of sending payslips, even if they are password protected. So to safeguard any potential breaches, uh, online payslips uses the same encryptions as online banking. So you can be confident that payslips are hosted securely. Now, a lot of employees look at paper copies as old-fashioned, and as generations grow up, employees are more used to doing so many things online, whether it is uh, banking or their shopping. So online payslips will just be seen as a norm to many employees. Printing is also environmentally damaging, uh, using paper, inks, and so on. But with the portal, it's quick, very easy to use, with no need for printing on paper, and employees can save the payslips as a PDF. Printing payslips can take a lot of time in loading the right paper, uh, printing, postage, and getting them out through the door generally. Now, while this is a, a very good time saver, if you think about what's changed recently in payroll like RTI and auto enrollment, the amount of time taken to run a standard payroll has increased, so anything that saves time will definitely be a benefit. And finally, if you think about your relationships with clients, a lot of processes have effectively uh, been put in place at a time when paper was the only way to go. So using this can be used as a modernization tool, changing the relationship slightly between the employer and the bureau. Now, some of you may be aware that we've had a version called automated payslips for a few years now uh, within Sage. So that's very well for individual companies, but we got a lot of feedback on what a bureau version should have. So the following features have been added or improved into the online payslips module with direct feedback from accountants. So companies or bureaus can upload logos, so when the employee logs in and views the payslip, it is clearly apparent that it's from their employer. Now, I mentioned the modernization this can bring, and one of the feedback we got was that the employers wanted to have a look at the values and payslips and check them before they were issued to the employees. With the online payslips portal, this can now be built inside of the process. The charges won't come into play until the payslips have been published to the employees, whereas in the past, the charges were effective as soon as they were sent out from the payroll. So now it is a two-step process where first, the payslips can be uploaded into the portal, and then step two, the payslips can be checked and then published once you or the employer is happy with them. If, however, there are any amendments to the payslip, you can simply make the changes in payroll and re-upload them. And this will overwrite the original pending payslip, and then you can continue on to step two to publish them. The payslips can be accessed anytime from virtually any device, such as smartphones, tablets, uh, along with PCs and laptops. 
And one of the key things we were asked for was the ability to set up the payslips in advance and automatically publish them at a future date. So this allows accountants and bureau managers to manage their workflow much more effectively. So for example, where you have employees getting paid the same amount week in and week out, you still had to log in on the old automated payslips uh, option just before the payroll date to complete and publish the payslips. Now, on the new module, you can set it with a specific date of when the payslips need to be issued, allowing you to complete payrolls much more in advance. There is also the facility to add messages to the portal. So when the employees log in, they can see messages, for example, season's greetings or information around benefits or pension schemes. Accountants can now report on company by company. So previously, reports would only give totals, but now you can report on individual companies. Employers can now be built into the process to help with things like how the portal works or helping employees reset passwords. So all of these features um, have been built from feedback accountants have given us. Now, with regards to the billing, we have a couple of different models around the billings uh, for accountants, so it is quite flexible. The best option is an annual subscription, so you roughly work out how many you will need over the course of a year and purchase a bundle. Now, this helps with businesses where they have fluctuations on the number of payslips where some months they will have a higher requirement and some months having a lower requirement. So if you look at the number of payslips across your payroll, you may have a different number of payslips from month to month. With the annual subscription, it doesn't matter if you use more in one month and less in another, as long as you are within your annual total. Now, we do have some people who prefer a monthly subscription, so that's fine, we can offer that too. The slight drawback is if you do go over what you have previously agreed, then there is a slightly higher rate for the overusage. So the annual subscription is certainly the one I would recommend. But with either option, if you are getting close to your limit and wish to upgrade to the next block, you can do so anytime. Just tell us before you exceed the limit and we'll adjust it accordingly so you don't fall into the overage rate. So that's the background side of things, but you want to know how does it work with payroll and how to set it up. So I'll take you through the setup stages within payroll and what, the, uh, what that looks like on the payslips portal. As it's a subscription service, the first time you go in, you may get a message like this. So simply contact your account manager who will activate it from our end. Now within the program, you will see an option for online payslip settings within the company area. And this will take you into the setup menu with quite a quick process. If you already have email addresses in the software, this will take no more than a couple of minutes for each company. So step one is to simply register the company for online payslips, where you will use your Sage ID to sign in. Now, if you can't remember your Sage ID, it will be the same one that you use for Sage One or Sage Drive or your network. So you would sign in using those details. We then set up the payroll users within your company who will have access to upload online payslips. Now, if you use the manager logon, and many companies just use the manager and nothing else, then at this stage, it will be a blank screen. And all you would do is cancel and move on. If you do have users set up, then you simply dictate which users you wish to allow to use the online payslips features for. Step number three is to manage the employees and which employees within this company will receive the payslips in this way. So a lot of companies will already have email addresses in the software set up due to auto enrollment or have been emailing payslips. So the email addresses will be pulled through for you. You simply go down the list and select the employees who will be receiving their payslips online. Now at the bottom right, there is a set email option, which will allow you to set up a corporate email structure. So for example, at Sage, our email addresses are in the format of forename.surname at sage.com. 
So that's all set up to use the online payslips uh, from this point onwards, but one of the benefits is the ability to upload historical payslips, and this will help eliminate the need for employees to contact the Bureau if they need access to old payslips, uh, if they've misplaced or lost them. So step four gives you the ability to upload historical payslips, where you simply select the date range you want, and select which employees you wish to upload the historical payslips for. Click Next and it will confirm how many historical payslips you are uploading. Now this does go towards the payslip count, so you might want to factor this in while working out how many payslips you will need. You then select Upload Payslips and you'll get a confirmation that they've been successfully uploaded. So this process takes seconds to do, and you don't have to log in to upload the payslips. The payslips will be sitting in the portal waiting to be authorised and published. Click to log in and enter your SAGE ID to get into the portal. Okay, so I'll now take you into the portal and look at it from a number of different perspectives. So as a Bureau user, when you log in, you'll be presented with the companies that you have set up to use online payslips via your Sage ID. You can click through into the company by clicking Manage to give you more information on what that company looks like. You can have a look at how many payslips have been uploaded and waiting to be published. The pending ones are those waiting to be authorised and ready to go now, and the scheduled ones are those set to be published at a future date. Looking at the options at the top, the Employees tab will give you a list of employees set up for the service and drill down into the employees. Published payslips will show you what has been published along, uh, already, along with the key values from their payslips. Pending payslips is where you would check to make sure you are happy with the figures and see, uh, simply select them all and publish them. If you want something to appear to your employees when they log in, you can enter them through the messages. You can set a date range if you only want to publicise it within a specific time period. The Edit Company Info screen is where you can upload company logos. Now currently you can only upload one image file, but if you do want more than one logo, for example both your practice logo and your employer's logo, then you'll be required to combine them into a single image and then upload it. And the last tab within Manage Permissions, you can decide who will, have, uh, who will have access to this company. You may differentiate between who can only upload payslips and who can publish. So if you want the employer to be part of the process, this is where you can add their email address so they can log in and publish payslips. From an employee perspective, once a payslip has been published, they'll receive a welcome email, something similar to what you're looking at on screen, uh, with the option to log in to their portal. And once logged in, the employee will see their payslip along with any historical ones uploaded down the left-hand side. Any messages that have been added will be shown on there too, and the employer details, including the logo, if added, will be visible. Contact details for any queries will also be shown, which can be amended accordingly from within the initial setup. So if they click on a payslip, their payslip will be displayed, which is currently in a generic template, but we are looking to add more templates in. The employee can also print or save the payslip locally as a PDF if they wish, or simply close it, and they can access it again any time in the future. So what will this look like on a day-to-day -day or week-by-week -week process? Well, we've built this into the standard payroll process. So on the payroll menu down the left-hand side, the option to upload payslips have been slotted in immediately after pre-update reports. You may still use pre-update reports to print payslips for some employees who may not have email addresses, for example. So when using the pre-updates report option, it will pick up those that have been set up for online payslips and give you a message if you wish to include these for printing. 
And after printing those you need, you simply move on to upload online payslips and a summary window will give you a list of employees along with their gross net tax figures and their national insurance number. A message also appears at the top confirming how many payslips you are about to upload. So you click on upload payslips and a confirmation window appears to tell you that has been successful. So at that stage, if you're simply uploading the payslips, you can close the window and move on, on to the next company. But if you are authorised to publish, publish the payslips, you can then log in and sign in to the portal. So hopefully that explains how simple it is to set up online payslips and the benefits associated with it. Now at this stage, uh, I will answer any questions you may have, so I will open up the lines for you. Again, use the chat window uh, if you've got any questions that you might want to ask. Your account manager will be in touch to help you set up and go through how many payslips you want. But if you do actually have any questions after the session has en ended, uh, feel free to drop us an email at adsalesenablement at sage.com.